Hey guys, welcome to a visual novel I've had for like a year, but never got around to. It's um, the Reject Demo Toko Chapter Zero Prelude. Wow, Toko? I thought it was. I always thought it said Tokyo. Huh. But, anyways, yeah, I don't know anything about this. I think I got it one time on a sale. But, yeah. Uh, Toko set that bright subsequently and look ahead of you. She takes a few moments to adjust the light and blurry shape slowly comes into the focus. Here you go, Toko. Here, what goes, Daddy? The tall demon sighs, running a hand through his face, his hair before putting on a big smile. Here's your first soul. She's going to die soon. It's your job to do the reaping. But I don't want anyone to die, Daddy. The demon's smile grows a little strained before he crouches to his meet his daughter's eyes. There's nothing we could do, Toko. If this is girl is supposed to die, we have to be here to receive her soul. It's her job, and it's very important. But she. It's a natural order of things for these humans to die, sweetie, but if she dies without us being there for her, her soul will be lost to wander the earth forever. So we're actually helping her. He sends up stray again, brushing off his knees. Toko remains un unenlightened by his argument. Though it may seem just a little bit hard for you now, but ferrying these souls, we actually do a lot of good for these humans. It's also what we require to survive. How come? Clay reaches out and pats her on the head like any kid. She often asks the hardest questions. Well, huh, as you get older, you'll realize that Toko is demons so eat what these humans do. As you grow, as you grow, you'll depend more on the helping these souls to hell, so you can become big and strong. That's good, right? Puffed up his chest, taking in a small kind of victory of a father trying to best, and turns Toko around, nudging her towards the girl in the distance. It's the only thing to do. Now go on. There isn't much time. The tall demon leaves Toko to perform her task. She takes a determined breath and focuses ahead. A little human girl, oblivious to the dangerous present, is wandering towards the busy street. She looks concerned, sniffling as she rubs her eyes. She takes another step off the sidewalk into the street. Hey, Toko grabs her hand and pulls the girl back. Eep. The human girl turns around and looks at the demon in surprise. Why are you crying? I lost my ball. Your ball. The girl sniffles again, nodding fervently as she squeezes Toko's hand. Uh-huh, my ball. I lost it somewhere. It's shiny and blue. Toko pauses, looking at the girl in the busy road. road. truck seems by a little too closely take a cautious step back. The human world, unsure, is scary. Toko looks suddenly quite nervous before glancing on the hand she was holding and letting it go. The girl giggles. Sorry, what human world? Uh, you're missing your ball, right? Toko quickly changes the subject while puffing up her chest and patting it with her hand. I hope you look for it. We look together. We'll find it real fast. Okay. Thank you for finding my ball. Well, that was fast. <laughs> the girl smiles, hugging him tightly to her chest. No problem, no problem. You're okay, right? The girl looks at the ball, then back up at Toko, humming. What? Your eyes are really funny. They're my daddy's, I think. She looks in curious. Where are you from? Well, I'm Demon Land. Huh, Demon Land? Are you Demon? I always thought they were scary, but you're nice. Toko huffs, twirling her fing fingers. Demons can be scary sometimes, but I'm really brave. Toko pauses a bit and looks at her feet. Actually, they says I'm supposed to find a soul. A human soul or something. The girl's eyes wide grow with curiosity as she shuffles in closer. A human soul? Well, Mama says anyone has a soul, so I doubt it's going to be hard to find one. Yes, but I, I don't think I can easily get one. But you help me find my ball. I have an idea. She places her ball cautiously, sitting it between her feet, and might try to roll it away with her. her. She pulls out of scrap paper with a bright red crown. I'll give you mine. You can borrow it for a while if you want. You can show your daddy this is definitely a soul. You just put soul on the piece of paper. Yep, take it. Also sure this couldn't have been what Clay meant. Toko grabs a scrap. I the girl gives it a proud and I pick up the ball again. I don't mind giving it to you since you need it, right? It'll definitely work. Um that's uh Toko Potts is a girl, Nadia. She must be a goddess or something. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Nadia. I'm glad I could help you find your ball, but I have to go now. Daddy must be wondering why I'm taking so long. I help you any time. Nadia shuffles a bit. And thank you, Toko. I should go home. You're really a great demon. The girl skippers off. Toko briefly looks down at the piece of paper and beams. Uh, so how did it go? Toko holds up the paper and up and beams. I got it. Clay looks puzzled for a moment. I tilts his head, glances at the human girl running up the street. Nothing happened to her. She gave you this instead and left. Toko folds up the piece of paper, carefully puts it in his pocket. That is wrong. No, 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 no. Clay begins away with saying frantically, you did your best you could. I'm proud of my little girl, but we better get back home quickly. Boy, I think she's going to kill me. As Clay walks to the door to hell, Toko falls behind her with the head still on the earth. Does she tell me her name? Who knows? I need some Hot Pockets, boy. I don't care about the intro. Hmm. Okay, no eating. 
He means we doubt that mess around about the underworld, whether it's called Hell, Jigoku, Tataris, or Digu. It's a place to damn their sins to suffer eternally for their sins. But while all good legends have their roots in truth, hell is merely the realm of demons, farriers, and caretakers of the underworld who guide the souls of mortals to the afterlife aboard the demon fairy. Whether sooner or later it doesn't matter, all humans are destined to die at some point in their lives. Once the human reaches their end, a fairy is assigned to guide their soul to limbo. It is there that the souls must purify themselves before they may ascend to the afterlife or return to the overworld to be reborn. These demons so perform this duty without recompense. As with each soul, a demon fairy is a savior and memory of that soul's life and power that comes with it. The soul of a demon is incomplete, lacking in emotion and empathy. All that incomplete demon can feel is the need to remove the void they were born with. The hunger for memory, emotion, and passion eternally drives them to consume the souls of humans. Millennia past, demons were surging great terrible masses upon the overworld to quell this hunger inside them. It was not long before starvation and fighting and the occasional lawsuit forced the demons realize that the vast consumer of humanity was unsuitable. In order to survive without consent and war between themselves, a demon revised the demon code and their role of led farriers who escort souls with each passing and subsequent fairy. They obtain the necessary nourishment to get stronger and prosper. Most young demons are quick to ferry their f- f- soul in spite of a passage to adulthood. However, one demon has failed every attempt to give her the very zero that wait blah 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 blah. The zero only zero soul demon in hell. This is her story. The reject demon. Huh, that's what I always call that. Okay, in the upper middle row, this is a young woman, her head rests in her textbooks, flopping not to face plant onto the desk. Each tick of the second hand feels slower than the last. Her mechanical pencil taps against her desk and seems the clock, disconnected and unaware. Every couple of minutes, she glances at the clock. Fifteen minutes left. Oops. She flips the page blank. Wait. She flips the blank page of her notebook. She fills with incoherent notes and doodles. Fourteen minutes left. This is last class of the day and far from her favorite. She have to wish her cl- most boring classes were at the beginning of the day, but she was stuck with this schedule. Eight minutes left. Six. For yeah. The professor is in the middle of the announcing the reading assessments for the next week as it is Friday. Other classmates rush to leave as quickly as possible. She drags herself into the bustling hallway over the roar of freshmen. She hears the voice of her friend. Ma'am, she got fat, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's rude. Um, ignore that. That is terribly rude. I'm sorry. Nadia. Steph, I'm sorry I didn't notice you back in class. I was busy taking notes. Don't worry, everybody was bored in that, by that lesson. We were all planning to go out in the Mammoth Burger and a bit want to join us. Oh no, I need to go home and study anyway. You should go without me. Hey, you sure you have a date? No, she still doesn't look at me suspiciously. I said I had to study. It's one of those things the university students have to do. Okay, but I still don't trust you. Make it up to me when we catch up later then. She already left. I wasn't making it up. I really do need to study. That's it. I'm just being dismissed. I don't even get a second chance. Second chance, Toko, do you know what I'm holding? My assignment record. The assignment record today, 417 second chances. Most of those were assigned to you in the hopes it would be trivially easy. And how many of you really succeeded at that? None. You failed to take even the simplest opportunities we presented you. We have no reason to keep your reject like you're around. Toko stands before the desk of a Pelotrix, director of Limbo and caretaker of Hell's Demon Code. Pelotrix is oppressively tall, even in growing her horns. It said that due to her immense status in hell, she can no longer fear souls from the mortal world, as she is unable to sustain a human guise, and there is a corollary rumors and speculations around... 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 Uh, speculations around... There we go. Pelotrix is other means of gathering assistance. Pelotrix adjusts her glasses that appears down to the child in front of her. Toko knows what she's about to say. As director, it's long time pa- past time to get my horny, my horns messy. So yes, you're being dismissed. There's no need for me to explain further. And there's certainly no need for you to ask for yet another second chance. <sighs> Damn. If I've dismissed it, I'm banished to the human world to live like a human, to slowly become human. Yes, well, you should have to worry about the consequences before this happened. You were warned countless times, but you paid us no need heed. As if you could just go through hell incomplete, realize that it's more for us, our bookkeep being than concerned about you. Drop off your insurance card, remember the keychain on the way out, have fun being a human. I hope it's you better than life down here. Toko's eyes turn to the ground, she's doomed. It's true that she has fell time again and that she remains a zero soul demon. And it's true that she has passed into adulthood without earning her horns. She hesitantly turns back to Patrick's who coolly, fi- coolly flips the Toko's file. The imposing demon occasionally pauses 
to stamp a page before moving on or to pull out a stick or roll and apply a large red frowning face over certain record of Toko's failure. One heavy instance of Toko's incontinence is an older eyes. Bellatrix neatly closes the folder, ties it shut, a bit of ash and twine, uh, criminously dumps the whole pile into a grinding, munching paper shredder. Bellatrix stops her fingers against her desk, weirdly sleep, waiting for Toko to leave. A new university building is under construction in the middle of Nadia's usual path. Uh, usual path? What? Okay. But it doesn't make the walk home much longer. She could use the time outside, though, to sit in the comfy classroom for hours. Fresh air is a blessing. Still, Nadia doesn't have any trouble staying awake. Something must be subconsciously stressing her out. She slows a stop and considers what she's doing. Ah, oh, geez, maybe she just put books with me and went with Steph. For a minute, she seriously considers running back to try to catch the Steph, but she is probably pretty far away by now. I'm already going in the opposite direction. Oh well, I'll put on some music for a while I study. Putting it into her hammy and high, Nadia continues on her way home. This, of course, is a disgrace for her to be an adult and yet still be a zero soul did not even have her horns. Here is in of limbo, the furthest most desolate part of the city of Dis, the door to the infinitely mortal world where souls are sent to be reborn again. No one else is around for a demon to be here by themselves is scandalous. There's doors that let one in, in and out, but this one is that Toko can come back from. She's been banished to Earth, a crummy little place full of famously mortals obsessed with prolonging their own short lives. She will not be able to return so she become a full demon, for all Toko knows that time will never come. Soon Nadia finds the sense of a city annoying. She can't put a finger on it, but it just feels really restless and fidgety, even though she's on the move. Eric, I'm so out of it today. Man, how do I go from sleeping close to being so restless? Someone she's passes by giving her a look. Yeah, sorry about thinking out loud. Nadia decides that maybe she should just be thinking about other things to make herself relax. She thinks about a series and songs she heard on the radio and unconsciously begins to hum to herself. What was once an endless hallway and a run down alley filled with refuse and an only dim light hand of light took a steps cautiously to what she recognized as the overworld. Cars rush back and forth on the road in front of her. People walk by, minding their own business. When she finally steps back to break the building and she has to cover her eyes, was the light her always this bright? None of your hands up ahead and bobs up and down as she walks down the sidewalk as if she's dribbling an invisible ball. Past her fire catches a tiny scene of a song she passes, though Nadia still doesn't notice her home. Her own humming. She feels warm despite the autumn air. Today will be a good day, she decides. It started off a bit iffy, but she finds herself bitter and relaxing. Maybe she'll call Steph to hang, ho- hang over later. She steps slightly and lost a moment. Nadia pays no attention to where she's going. Toko survives, sur- surveys a pedestrian and sort of stays as an be per minute. All she'll do is find someone who is using her soul. It's a demon's job after all. She hates the thought of it, but she hates to be free. She hates being here far more. Each step she takes growing more agonizing and more unsettling and uncomfortable. Took her sister out of the corner of her eye, whistle of cloud around her mouth with each breath. Demon smoke, this can be natural for humans. Her skin feels so strange, all the heat of hell escaping from her pores, leaving her a husk. Will she die if she didn't find her soul soon? Distracted by how rapidly the frigid earth chills her, she pays no attention to where she walks. Ooh. Ow. Toko tumbles over something before she has to ground her fall is stopped by a soft and squishy cushion. Her sense returns, catch in, catches a glimpse of a passerby staring straight at her, slowly talking in confusion and sing. Hey, excuse me, the request comes from the Toko. She looks down, and the thing that cushions her right on her fall is her, under her. She sprawled on top of the human girl, one hand holding her head, and the other planted firmly on the human's chest. A piece of paper is scattered in the gutter. Realizing what she's done, took a little a squeak of surprise. She scumbles back while the crowd disperses and laughs among themselves. The other girls cross her knees and most modestly wipes her sweater and skirt from the fall. She's slightly taller and tucked good into much curvy and round like a soft marshmallow stuffed in a sweater. Her complexion seems creamy and airy. She really is a marshmallow. As Toko sheepishly backs away from the hum down, hum, human girl uh, looks down. Her name with a hundred on plush after colliding with a half naked girl. Your knee is bleeding. Now what? Hold on, I have a first aid kit here. The girl reaches into her bag and pulls out a small white tail with a red plus on and once it's opened, took her nurse also sorts of strange swabs and bandages. Bleeding. Don't worry, I always come prepared for these sorts of things. She pulls out a swab and cleans the scrape before de- le- delicately applying one of the bandages. She chuckles awkwardly as she helps the he- half naked girl up. Hey, you're shivering. Are you okay, shivering? I think it must be cold, something like that. Cold? I felt your skin. You're freezing here. Where's my hoodie? The human opens her bag and pulls out a gray hoodie. It's far more fur than the demon. Then she runs through her fingers and trying to figure out, then pushes the, her arms into the sleeves. Oh, this smells weird. Oh, I'm sorry here. I mean, you should look cute in it, though. As Tucker pulls the human hoodie over her head, she realizes that there's something weird at. She only realizes that the clothes she's wearing is cool. She has worn for most of her life. 
by far more villain than anyone else. It's, it's a strange and bizarre person that she it never occurred to her before. She's sure she's not sure if she should be annoyed by how easily the humans fill this hoodie up, but she leans in and this fit. This time her curiosity, but before she can manage to get irritated, a different sort of thought surfaces. It's when she becomes about care about modesty. Yo, stiff it, you shed and run a bit today, so it's kind of Toka's expression contorts to grimace somewhere between pain and disgust as she looks at the human silly smile. The girl only giggles softly, but she must have noticed too. Toka's face there are several hues redder as she tries to avoid looking at the human. Then before Toka can retort to the girl, stands up and extends her hand. My name's Nadia, come on, walk you home. I'm Toko, and let's do this, I'm not from here. I mean, I'm just visiting. That's fine. How about we go eat? Eat? I don't have any human. I mean, I don't have money. Fine, then my treat. Wait, wait. Not here. What? Simply waves her hand dismissively. Come on, I know a little place nearby. Toko does have time to object, even if she wants to. Not here grabs her hand, tugs the Toko along. Damien flailing the hoodie like a small gray wind sock. Man, I need a, I need a drink, man. Toko fights back. Oh man, I needed that. Oh, sorry guys. Really needed that. Okay. She feels her stomach um, rumble painfully. That's new. Toko pokes at her plate with the fork. She was unsure about what she was supposed to order when they got there, so she had the cheapest thing she could find. There's a lot more things in the burger than me described, though. Probably not what he is doing. Come on, eat up. I can hear your belly from here. Why? 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 Why did you buy me food if I knocked you over like that, huh? It's not like you did on purpose. Besides, I can't leave a cute girl in trouble like that, huh? I see. Toko cuts off a piece of burger at the side of a fork. This one with all the food has made her somehow hungry. And incredibly so, but a demon is in a situation she's used to. She takes the tiny and spice she can. The burger swishes on her teeth. She swallows and stares out the rest of her f huh? Her stomach feels a bit less roundly. Before she knows it, she's stuffing her face as fast as she can. As she eats, she knows something. Taste and texture slowly stimulate her taste buds. When she was so full to her demon, human food didn't seem to taste like a mush. It was only been a few hours, and yet Nadia happily watches, seemingly mesmerized. But only falls with the salad. Nadia, um. You feeling better, Toko? Yeah, I think sorry. Sorry. Why sorry? Well, for imposing anything like this. Oh, please, you're hardly imposing. When Nadia checks the time on her phone, the two realize they have eaten well into the night. Hmm. Hey, it's Friday. Let's go see a movie, okay? A movie? Sure, in the theater. Just for you all fun. I'm not sure what a movie is. But you just you don't know? Well, I'm sort of new to town. Huh? Where are you from? You seem to have a great English for someone who's never heard of a movie before. Oh, well, it doesn't matter if you never did theater. And it makes all that more important that we check it out right now. Who's this? Me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Meanwhile, a lanky young woman looks over a vacated fast food joint. That looks like a dude. She seems she deems the faint smells waiting from the store suitable she enters. It's usually fine hamburger, potato, poor yours. I wish it take partake of your goods and services. So that will be twenty eight pure historic super stacks, twenty mammoth burgers, fifteen carbon of wharf superfoods, and eight extra large volcano wedges. It's thirty pure historic super stacks of twenty five mammoth burgers. Also take ten of your deluxe bacon and apple crisps. Uh so I'm not sturdy, okay. Yes, that's correct. So total is Two hundred and forty-seven and eighty-six cents. Yes, I have already prepared you a sufficient amount of human money. Would you like this to go for here to go? To go. Going is good. I'm very hungry. <laughs> All right. You kept starting to one poster, so all you wouldn't want to watch this thing that just seems to be about three people getting bumped into each other's foreheads. Now he puts a finger to her chin and hums a computation. This is the kind of movie you think on someone to a day unless you know them really well. But this was for boring people. Boring? Sometimes you just want to watch something sappy. Hmm, what do you usually do for fun back for a year from? I didn't have a lot of fun in uh, where I'm from. I see, well, what did you want to have fun? Fun, huh? Don't go to really show what fun is. Hell, for her, was full of pressure, so I'm above the succeeding and become a proper demon. Maybe she wanted to have fun, and then that proper demon would be permitted, or maybe her concept of fun was, was off. Maybe. Okay, let's stand. The movie's starting on something quiet and watch. Why is your arm around my shoulder? He T.D. you mind? Well, not really. Toko tries to focus on her flashy screen in front of her. Is this all human life is? I feel so calm and lethargic to simply sit down and watch something unfold. No demands to get involved and no feeling weak because she didn't end up on top. The people on screen are getting an argument because of their coffee. Toko is sure why this is worth arguing about and why they don't try and attack each other and settle the differences that way. It must be another human thing to just talk. Nadia is certainly good at it. Soon Toko finds herself struggling to pay attention to what's going on. She sees something pulling her eyelid. Her attempts to sway it or maybe talk about the fact that nothing is there. 
Duck, are you okay? I feel weird. You must be getting sleepy here. If you want to stay up, drink this. What is it? Soda. It's pretty sugary. Probably not like what you're used to. It'll wake you up, though. Tucker looks at the straw and he takes an experimental sip, feeling that fizzy liquid fill her mouth as she slides down her throat. It's different from her usual demon food, which is often in her sensational texture rather than some taste. Before she realizes she has drunk the entire cup and passed the empty container back to Nadia. Hey, I want some of that. <laughs> Never mind. Nadia slightly, some slightly, she starts to pull a popcorn shit gone for the two of them and mourns about how thirsty she is about to become. Do you like the movie? Yeah, that's good. So tell me what you're saying, I'll show you where it is. You don't know where it is. Wait, you don't have anywhere to stay. Seriously, you don't have any money. You don't have a place to stay. What a pickle. But you could crash at my place saying that at least. But you absolutely couldn't. You've done too much already. Toko? Gen... Gen Tzu? What are you doing here? Oh, Toko, you know her? One of your friends. Excellent. I came on an assignment. I just had dinner. It was very delicious. Yes, well, thanks for the update. I'm going to just say Gen Hao. I don't know what the X is for. Gen Hao? Gen Hao is Gen... Jin Hao, I don't know. Jin Hao is fairly strange, even for demons, even though she she has all sorts of taste as a proper demon. She eats far more than any gluttony demon Toko's met. She also is thin, too thin, almost as if she's starving for food, even though she eats nonstop. Gin Hao is also a strange type of busking on the street corners between assignments for money to buy a thing her stomach desires. Well, Toko, are you going to introduce me to your friend? She's not my friend. Her name's Gin Hao. She's a statement from where I came from. Oh, well, my name's Nadia. So nice to meet you, Gin Hao. Hello, I like Nadia. She's not like I mean, like Telco. Oh my! Hey, why are you even bothering us anyway? If I need, you have an assignment, hurry up, finish it, and get out of here. Telco is very empty today. Is this just a human? Because you sure are. Go and finish that sentence. Telco shoves her palm against Gin Hao's mouth. Gin Hao pauses reflectively and pulls Telco's hand away. I see your sister. She is here looking for you. The same moment. Whichever sister leaves Toko somewhere red all baby because of that naughty and probably not took a grease and naughty's offer. Gain now wanted herself satisfied with her expert communication skills. Besides, she nearly had uh, both food and men to pay for it. As the two walked in Nadia's apartment, it's even how lucky it was that Nadia and Toko met what they did. It sees both as going toward the hell are very near to each other. Toko has other things on her mind, however. In the most populous part of the city, they still enjoyed a meal and movie together, and now she'll go to Nadia's apartment. Sleep there, and then what? Toko sure isn't sure yet. Ah, uh, fine, Mac. It's not much, but it's home. But the two winter, Toko knows how small it is. There are no rooms to speak up yet in the bathroom. It's a tiny kitchen that Nadia makes do with. The apartment also only has one bed. Plus, it's just across from a small TV. Nadia says Toko try and watch with her on it while she prepares the bathroom. Ooh, excuse me. The prospect of the one that bed suddenly makes Toko nervous. It's already late, and as soon as Nadia got home, she immediately began to prepare both baths. She's probably going to sleep afterwards. That's over, and we don't have a family. Uh, well, I do, but me and my family don't really see eye to eye. None of your pauses. But never mind. Are you sure you want to find your sister? Toko voice look at the human. Well, how about a bath then? Of course not. You might try and spy on me. You know, I wouldn't do that. I'm more subtle than that. So, hey, Toko, where are we so dismissive towards getting out? She seems so weak. D getting out doesn't care about silly things like feelings. She, uh, she looks sad, huh? How would you even tell? Intuition. She'd be nice to her. She told you about your sister after all. We can meet up with her tomorrow and you'll be able to go home. Is that good news, Toko? Yeah. Toko looks away briefly before standing up. I guess I'll go then. Great. Okay, maybe just a little one. And the bath, Toko puts her head on her knees and contemplates what happened to her today. That water is a poor comfort and the only way to fell in the accordance of the other world. She reminds, she wonders why she's going to sleep. And because she can sleep on the floor, Toko does a human way to tell us she's on bed with a complete stranger. Then I Toko's already thought about how, about well, the more naughty off when she start caring about people spying on her when she was naked. Why does she even care about being exposed? In any case, the day was in many ways completely exhausting for Toko, and she finds herself subconsciously yawning for the first time. And then the bit of humanity. Nadia takes her shower and once Toko's done, and carries her Toko and hears noises like the soap falling to the tub while the shower runs. The demon rests her head on her knees again and wraps her arms around them. She didn't have any clothes in her sides, but Nadia offered her a wash hoodie and a pair of panties. The thought that worries took on most is they're actually very comfortable. With a rush of air, same billows out of the bath and watches Toko strain the thoughts away. As she has a towel in head in hand, carefully dresses her hair as she walks into the room. Ah, hot showers are the best. I'm getting really tired. Is anywhere I can sleep? Here, well, I only have one bed. I hope you don't mind sharing it tonight. We might have to squeeze. There's not much room. Fine. Nanny turns red and grins stupidly to herself, walks to the end of the bed, and she sits next to Toko. The demon looks off to the side. She's a sure why it's still difficult for her. Why she could be like a normal demon. Or is she still in your overworld right now? 
Nani notices that something between some Sabata Telco tilts her hand to look at the girl's face. She pulls the towel off her head and fully as it speaks. Is something wrong, Telco? I want your soul. My, my. That's awfully afford of you, Telco. I'm a demon, Nadia. I was sitting here in a weeping human soul. And it has to be your soul. A demon, huh? Uh, those clothes you're wearing. I know it's too early for me, Halloween. Well, I'm serious. If it's you, I guess it wouldn't mind, but should we date first? You know what I mean? Yes. No, uh, yeah, I'm turning up the lights. Be warned, though. I'm a bit of a cuddler. I'm going to be serious here. Aren't you scared of me? Nope. Night, Toko. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm ending the video here, guys, and I will see you guys later.